That's a good black crappie right there. That's sort of what I'm talking about. Let's let him go. You know, folks, it's a fact that I simply love the fish. There's no doubt in my mind, and, well, there shouldn't be any doubt, not even in Mama Sue's mind, of how much I love the fish. Now, this morning, it is cloudy, overcast, or hazy. It's a hazy-type morning. The reason is, well, last night it rained all night, drizzled all night, nothing real hard, and the temperature warmed up slightly. So it's a little bit foggy out here. Um, very comfortable morning. It's probably about 61 degrees. And um, the, the thing about today is, here on the Coosa River, the water has been dropped around two feet. And when that happens, there's no doubt in my mind, I want one of these in my hand. I want to skip docks. I can get up under docks that normally I couldn't uh, before they drop the water. And under those docks, well, they should be some crappie. Now, they're not pulling any water this morning. And on the Coosa River system, that's very important. What that does is it positions fish in certain ways, even on docks to where they're, they set themselves up to feed on shad. Right now, their shad just randomly, they're just milling around, and that's what the crappie's doing. But there's several different patterns out here, but the most dominating, or the funnest to me, is going to be skipping docks today. And stay with me, because that's what we're going to do. But before we get started, look here. I like a six foot rod. I get a lot of questions about that. When it comes to skipping docks, I like a six foot rod, a light action rod at that, and a, and a rod that's real light because a lot of times I will skip all day long. If the crop, crappie cooperates all day long, I just can't go home. I can fish and stand up here in this boat all day long as long as they're biting. And it, and it doesn't phase me a bit. Now, as far as the reel, I like a 1,000 size reel. This is a little Daiwa right here. Um, a little Daiwa Rev Revers 1,000 size. And I have it loaded with four pound test, high vis line. And on the business end, I have a 132nd ounce jig head with a single strand 40 pound test weed guard. Now, I put these in my own jigs myself, and I use a single-stranded uh, weed guard. Now, I have a video on that of how you can make your own. I'm not going to pay $4 a pack uh, for four jigs with, with a metal or a steel a wire weed guard. I've tried them before. They will not perform as good as a monofilament weed guard or a fluorocarbon. You could use 40 pound test fluorocarbon. Either way, um, it, that weed guard is just right for a soft biting crappie and you'll catch most of the fish that bites. Um, now on four pound test line, I, when, if I'm skipping docks, I'm going to have to have either a Palomar knot or a trilane knot right there on that. That way I can get the most strength that I can out of this four pound test line. I'll use a loop knot if I'm vertical jigging where there's not anything that the fish can run up into and, and um, get locked up in, okay? There's a big difference in a trilane knot than a loop knot or a Palomar knot in a loop knot. As far as strength, you can't beat a Palomar knot. But that's my opinion. Uh, let's quit talking about it. Let's get busy and see if we can catch a few crappie today. Hey, it's a blessing to be out here. 
Okay, we're easing up to this dock right here. There's virtually no wind at all. Now, this is the perfect time when there's no wind to skip docks. Now, I can skip them if there's a little ripple on the water, but I'm going to tell you, it's a lot easier to skip it when it's flat like this because this jig head, this jig is so light that just a little bit of ripple on the water can cause it to be a little bit tough sometimes when you're talking about skipping. Skipping, well, I'm going to stay away from a dock. I don't want to get very close at all if I can help it. But let's get a skip back up in there, which that wasn't exactly <laughs> where I wanted it. These fish <clears throat> are going to be deep. They're going to be deep in there, folks. Now, this is an 11-foot dock right here. It's pretty deep. So we're going to have to figure out how deep the crappie are. And usually, they're four or five feet deep. They're about halfway. Is a great way to... I just got bit right there. Now, I don't know if that was a crappie or not. These fish could be anywhere from a couple feet under the surface all the way to about midway four or five feet deep and in some situations they're a foot from the bottom you just have to monkey with them and figure out how deep they are there's a fish now that's a crappie i knew there's a crappie on this dock okay and that one's close to a keeper but I barely had him hooked. As a matter of fact, he fell off. Y'all seen that. So they may not be that active. That's what I go by a lot of times. I mean, he was barely hooked. That's a black crappie. But the thing about it is, a lot of times, if you catch one, now I threw right up under there kind of a 45 degree angle right here to this corner and uh i triggered a bite now that fish was five feet deep folks five feet deep so what i'm going to do is repeat that there could be a school under there and what i done was fire fire them up i might have fired them up fired them up right there <laughs> just let him go we're not going to keep any fish today we got a plenty we got plenty let's get a bait back up under there let it fall about five feet and that's close to it right there and let's bring it back real slow and there he is there he is we might have fired him up right here that little fish is pulling i'm talking about for him to be nine and a half inches long he had a lot of power so i might have fired him up right there golly another inch or so and that'd be a good one to eat but like i said we got plenty in the freezer and i'm gonna let them go today let's make another cast right there one two three four five now i'm at the depth let's bring it back steady reel that'll keep it at that depth and there's another fish i'm catching them now this one's a little better a little better crappie right here Pulling, son of a gun. Let's see. It's a lot better fish. But you can see right there, barely got him. Now, when a fit, when a crappie really wants a bait, it'll be way down in there, folks. So they're, they're not terribly active. That's about a, I don't know, 11 inch fish, probably. Let's let him go. That's a good one right there. That'd be a great one right there to eat. 
on days like this and in this type of watercolor, I like white or pearl. Just plain old white or pearl. When it's kind of a day, uh, a, um, what am I trying to say? Hazy, hazy day like today. That works great for me. One thirty second ounce jig falls about a foot a second. Four, five, okay, we're five feet. Just bring it back. Slow and methodical. He's hitting it. <laughs> he didn't eat. Well, see, they're just nipping now. Now, on docks, especially these big ones like this, it's sort of cut up or chopped up is what I call it, kind of like a house, chopped up house. I'll fish all the way around them. Look here. I've got a bite right there. There's a crappie because the reason why is just for this reason. There could be two schools of crappie on a dock of this size. Okay, there we go. Barely, barely hooked. But he's hooked. That's a black crappie, let's just let him go. But a 132nd ounce jig head, not only does it skip better, um, you can hold it in front of these fish a long time. If the fish are inactive, well, it's just too bad. You can go ahead and catch them like I'm doing right now. I'm not saying these fish are totally inactive. Uh, I'm just saying they could be a little more active. Now, that one grabbed it a little bit deeper, and we got him. Let's let him go right here. You know, folks, this dock right here is loaded with crappie but they're small. Um, well, they're not real, real small, but they're pretty small. But the thing about it is, I had to make a lot of cast before I finally caught that first crappie. What did that do? Well, that triggered the school to become active. That school of crappie was not active. The reason why is because there's no water movement at all, which I knew that's what was going to have to happen. I knew I was going to have to catch the first crappie out from under this dock, which I knew there's crappie under here. I want to make that uh, known to be a, I want that to be a fact known. But I knew I had to trigger a bite first before I could cause them other fish to become active. It fires them up just like a school of bass. These fish was not active and I had to be patient and figure out how deep they were and get that first bite, then all of a sudden, I started catching a lot of fish. Uh, that's the best way I can explain it. What I'm saying is, if you're fishing this way, um, this technique, this application, whatever way you want to say it, be patient. Don't just make a few casts and go to the next dock. Don't get in a hurry, because what happened is you're going to leave a lot of fish behind, especially if the fish are not active. Okay. So you can cause a crappie to become active that's not. That That's the fact. Let that be wrote down in the book of crappie. Okay. What we're going to do right now is check a couple more dogs and see if we can't catch a little better quality fish. I'm looking for a little better fish than that, if we can find them. Never know, each and every dock is just like an aquarium. I had a friend of mine, well, he used to make fun of me when I said that, but it's true, each and every dock is unique. The way it's constructed, and each one of them are individual aquariums. That's what I look at. That's the way I feel about it. Some aquariums have more fish in them than others, and that's just how I simplify dock fishing. But this is a good looking dock right here. It is in about seven feet of water. Plenty of depth. And what I do is I'll take my time and I'll fish each and every post 
I'll fish all the way around the dock. And I just got a little little bite right there. That was probably a bluegill, but we'll try it again, make sure it wasn't a crappie. Sometimes crappie a nip it like that one did. That's a good crappie right here. Golly. Come on out of there. All right, that's a good fish right here. Mm-hmm. Man, that's a white crappie, the first white crappie I've caught. And it's a seven foot dock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a good one. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, folks, it wasn't long ago when I was talking about white crappie, and I finally caught one right there. That's a pretty good fish right there. A lot of difference in between a white crappie and black crappie. There's two different species. And right now the white crappie is starting to pull up out of the deeper water up into the shallower water because the water temperature is falling. But look how deep he got that bait. Y'all see that? That fish wanted it. What has happened is I made a, a skip and I got bit. And uh, I didn't even jerk because the fish didn't commit. It was a nipping bite. Skipped right back in the same place again, and this fish committed. So he didn't want it the first time, but the second presentation he did. Fish slow and give him a chance. That's reviving right there. There it goes. That's the way it was back in my day. We had to wear toe sacks for breeches and toe sacks for old shirts, old wore out, doggone boots, brogan boots. Lucky if you had a pair of socks. I changed colors, if y'all noticed, to a, this is a pink phantom made by Bobby Garland. This is also a great, with a pink head, this is also a good bait for this type of, when it's overcast, like it is right now. Or muddy, or dingy water situations. Either way, pink is a great, great color. There he is. Oh, we. Boy, boy, boy. This is another good one right here. I changed angles. Let's see if we can flip him in here. Golly, boom, what a crappie. I changed angles, folks. They quit biting, so I come up here behind them. And that's a good trick right there for y'all to know. Just try different angles. Remember, you're an angler. To be an angler, you gotta be willing to fish all angles. Let him go. What that does is that it just, it's something different and it triggers the bite triggers the bite let's look up under here what i'm fishing y'all can see that up under there post after post after post <laughs> and there's quite a few crappie held up under there not just a great big number but there's a few we might catch one more i don't know Yep, there's one more, and a good one, too. Oh, my. Oh, my, that fish was just watching that jig go by time after time after time, and finally he obligated. We're going to met that one. That's a good fish right there. That is the kind I love to catch. Well, really, I love to catch them all. Look at there, what a crappie. My, 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 my. Whoa, doggone it. Hey, man, I'm hyped up bigger than everything now. Whoa! Now, there is an old big one right there, folks. I just repetitively cast one time after another, real patient. And finally, that big son of a gun bit. There's no telling how many times he watched that jig go by. 
That's a good black crappie right there. That's sort of what I'm talking about. Let's let him go. Good fish right there. Watch him. There he goes. Well, folks, that was simply a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you what, the better fish are moving up, and um, I'm going to tell you what, the bigger fish will even start showing up, the big slabs. When the water temperature falls a little bit more, I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments, everything y'all do for this channel. Hey. Remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.